Uh, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the first meeting of the Committee on Appropriations for the 117th Congress. We meet today to consider and adopt our committee rules and subcommittee jurisdictions. And House rules require me to remind you that we have set up an email address to which members can send anything they wish to submit in writing at any of our hearings or markups. That email address has been provided in advance to your staff. Before we turn to our formal business, let me take a moment to share a few thoughts on my vision for approaching our work on the Appropriations Committee over the next two years. It is the greatest honor of my life to chair this committee and to work with all of you. My mission, our mission is to shape the $1.4 trillion that goes through the 12 appropriations subcommittees to make government work for working people, the middle class and the vulnerable. And after a period of disinvestment, we need long-term public investment. I intend to be strong and inclusive, that our chairs and ranking members feel empowered that we pass all 12 appropriations bills in regular order. Inclusive means involving and listening to chairs and ranking members, sharing information, allowing diverse voices to be heard. We will ensure members are able to see results in appropriations, working with both parties and building consensus. I have had the opportunity to speak with all of the Democrats and just about all of the Republicans, except for two uh, where I've left messages. I am eager for us to get to work and responsibly fund our, our government in a way that meets the needs of this moment and builds back better a nation where everyone has the opportunity to contribute and to succeed. So I look forward to working uh, with all of you uh, fully in person as soon as the public health circumstances allow. But for now, thankfully, we have the technology to help our members and staff stay healthy by conducting this meeting using video conferencing. For today's meeting, the chair or staff designated by the chair may mute participants' microphones when they are not under recognition for the purposes of eliminating inadvertent background noise. Members are responsible for muting and unmuting themselves. But if I notice that you have not unmuted yourself, I will ask you if you would like the staff to unmute you. If you indicate approval by nodding, staff will unmute your microphone. Chairwoman Nita Lowy said many times that she counted Congresswoman Kay Granger as her partner and her friend. I plan to do the same. Members on both sides know Congresswoman Granger for her experience, her professionalism, and her dedication to completing our work on time. And I just say to you, Kay, my friend, I look forward to working closely with you as we move through the entire process this year, from oversight and budget hearings through markups and floor consideration and into conference negotiations. We have already had several conversations. Before I turn to Ms. Granger for her opening remarks, let me extend a warm welcome to the six new Democratic members of the committee. And I know Congresswoman Gr Granger will introduce the new members uh, on her side shortly. Representative Adriano Espaillat of New York's 13th District, Representative John Harder of California's 10th District, Representative Jennifer Wexton of Virginia's 10th District, Representative David Trone of Maryland's 6th District, Representative Lauren Underwood of Illinois' 14th District, and Representative Susie Lee of Nevada's 3rd District. I welcome all of you to this distinguished committee, and I hope you will come to share my pride in the Appropriations Committee's role in our government and in our nation. And now I would like to rep recognize the ranking member of the Appropriations Committee, Congresswoman Kay Granger, for her opening remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to begin by congratulating you for taking over the gavel of the Appropriations Committee as we begin our first official meeting of the 117th Congress. I wish we were all in the same room today to hear the sound of your gavel, but I, I know you'll continue to look for ways to, for us to, to meet in person. I will do the same. Madam Chair, I want to say a few words about you personally. You have served with distinction on appropriations for many years. You've already shown you're going to hit the ground running. 
in one of our first conversations after you became chair, you asked for my support to have a bipartisan briefing on the security con concerns raised by the attack on the Capitol on January the 6th. Of course, I supported that effort. And I know we'll all continue to review these issues more formally in subcommittees. I really look forward to working with you and all the colleagues as, as we tackle this issue and many other challenges. And I know that we will work together and to, for the very best appropriations we can bring. Before I talk about the next year, I wanna reflect a little on the year we just lived through. It was certainly unlike any other but even during this very difficult period, the Congress and the committee stepped up and took the lead. Over just a few short months, we worked to get four supplemental appropriations bills signed into law to combat the coronavirus. All of these passed with strong bipartisan support. In December, we were able to finish all 12 appropriations bills and provide additional aid to address the coronavirus, even though many people predicted we couldn't get our work done. The way we move forward over the next few weeks and months will set the tone for how we'll work together in this Congress. I believe we produce the best policies when all ideas are heard and when we voice our opinions. I hope members will try to find common ground and leave our policies leave out our policies that members on our side of the aisle consider controversial. I hope the chair will move all the bills through committee and members can express their views and de debate the issues. It's also important that appropriations bills are considered on the floor in a way that allows all members of the House to be heard and offer their amendments. Before I close, I have some additional announcements I'd like to make. Congressman Tom Cole will continue to serve as our vice ranking member. All of the ranking members will remain the same as in the previous Congress. And Congressman Ben Klein and Congresswoman Ashley Henson will be our Republican designees to the budget, budget committee. I wanna thank all of these members for being willing to serve in their positions. I'd also like to welcome the six Democrats and six Republicans who are joining the committee. On our side of the aisle, we welcome Congressman Valadeo back to the, sub, to the committee. We look forward to working with the new members that have been appointed, Representatives Resch Gonzaler, uh, Klein, Garcia, Gonzalez, and Henson. I'm optimistic that this will be an outstanding group of members and leaders in place, and we will continue in the best tradition of this committee to be able to disagree without being disagreeable. I hope we can work together to achieve many good things for the American people. And I thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Uh, I thank the ranking member for her very, very kind words and congratulations. And again, to reiterate, I am looking forward to a very close partnership as we as we go forward. Indeed, it has been a very difficult uh, uh, year past uh, in the midst of what is a uh, the worst a healthcare crisis and economic crisis we've seen in a generation. But I think the hallmark of the Appropriations Committee, as you so beautifully pointed out, is we do work, we can work together, and we can get the work done uh, on time and, uh, and, and in an effort to try to make that difference uh, for the people that, that we serve. Um, let me just uh, also congratulate Representative Valadeo, uh, uh, representatives of uh, Rensselaer, uh, Mike Garcia, Ben Klein, Ashley Henson, Tony Gonzalez. Welcome to the committee and looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, what I didn't mention in my remarks is that we do have three new cardinals on our side of the of the aisle. Congresswoman Shelley Pingree that will now chair the Interior Committee. Uh, Congressman Barbara Lee uh, will chair the State Foreign Ops uh, Subcommittee and Congressman um, uh, Matt Cartwright will uh, chair uh, a CJS. Um, this is, we can't do this work, my friends, without the extraordinary efforts of the full committee and with the, uh, with the subcommittee staff as well. So let me just take a moment to say a thank you. I don't know, I don't see Shalanda, but I hope you are there, Shalanda, so that the full committee can say thank you. Thank you for your dedication, your tireless work uh, for this committee. You have earned 
our respect and admiration, all of us, over the 14 years you have served this committee. You're off now to be the Deputy Director of the Office of Management and Budget. You've been our staff director since 2017. You made history as the first Black woman to serve in that position and as a trusted aide both to Chairwoman Lowy and to myself. You successfully navigated the end of the 2018-19 government shutdown and played an essential role in Congress's response to the coronavirus pandemic. So fortunately for us and for the country, you will remain a key player in the appropriations process. And we all look forward to working closely with you uh, in this new and very important role. Um, and while this is a big loss for our committee, we are in the good hands with our new staff director, Robin Giuliano, and deputy staff director, Matt Washington. Uh, Robin comes with vast experience in the executive and legislative branches of government, uh, nonprofit experience. Uh, I've seen firsthand uh, what an incredible force she is and a fierce negotiator. Matt Washington has extensive experience on the Hill, 13 years serving this committee, including as clerk of two subcommittees on the authorizing side and in personal offices. I have huge confidence in these two very capable, hardworking people and look forward to all that they will do uh, to help all of us, working families uh, and working families all over the country. I say submit to all, Robin and Matt are always available to you and I encourage you to reach out to them whenever you need them. I also look forward to working with Anne-Marie uh, Schottbach and Johnny Caberly on the entire Republican staff. I thank you for your commitment, your dedication and your professionalism uh, to help all of us. Our names are on the door, but you help us to make our way uh, through all of these appropriations uh, 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 processes uh, over, over, the, uh, over the year. Um, let me also recognize and thank the three members from the majority side who will serve as our representatives on the Budget Committee, David Price, Barbara Lee, and Jennifer Wexton. Uh, also, I would like to mention that in accordance with House Democratic Caucus rules, we have elected a vice chair of the committee, and it's Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence from Michigan. Uh, a last bit of housekeeping this year. Uh, I'm just going to say congratulations uh, to Congresswoman Susie Lee of Nevada and Congressman Tony Gonzalez of Texas. You will serve as co-chairs of the committee's flower fund. Uh, as you may recall, the flower fund sends flowers or food baskets uh, to the family of a member who has experienced an illness or lost a family member or who is celebrating the birth of a child. Um, the fund may operate a little differently this year, but as all members have done in the past, I am requesting that we each contribute uh, $20 to the fund, and I'm going to leave it to our fund co-chairs uh, to work out the logistics under what are unusual uh, circumstances. Um, another piece of um, housekeeping, we have received some inquiries about travel uh, for committee members and staff in the near future. Uh, given the CDC guidelines uh, that say travel can increase the chance of spreading and getting COVID-19, uh, the committee will continue not to allow uh, travel at this time. Committee travel is, is an essential part of our oversight work, and I know I do, and we look forward to returning to it as soon as the guidelines indicate uh, that it is uh, that it is safe. Um, and uh, uh, I just now would like to ask if there are any members who wish uh, to make opening remarks. And if you would like to be recognized, you can please use the, the raise your hand a function in WebEx and you will be recognized. I'll ask again, anyone want to make any remarks? Uh, with that, let's get, get on to the business. And, 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 and again, um, I, I wish I could, I wish we could all be together. It's so much better to look into people's faces and interact with one another. And I think you know that uh, I'm a hugger and I miss the, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the interpersonal reaction in person that uh, we're not allowed to do that 
these days. Um, but without any further ado, let's proceed to the business of the day. First, are the committee rules. Uh, let me make a point is that, um, oh, wait a minute. Um, there were apparently there were two people who had their hands up. Uh, Congresswoman Franco, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. Congresswoman uh, Franco, you are recognized. Hello, hi everybody. Uh, thank you for all this. Um, Madam Chair, I, I know that there is a, a big COVID package going through. Uh, could you just, can you let us know how members of the Appropriation Committee can have some input? Well, the members of the Appropriations Committee uh, already uh, are having input. I think that's a great question. And I, uh, I really thank you for that. Um, uh, we are uh, trying to work uh, with the uh, House, uh, 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 with in, in the House, with the um, uh, appropriators and the subcommittee chairs. Uh, we're trying to work with the uh, with the Senate, um, and uh, also uh, uh, try to uh, look at how we can, uh, with reconciliation. Uh, the Appropriations Committee does not have the kind of a central function that it has had uh, with the supplementals, as has been pointing out before. But we are trying to do everything that we can uh, to um, uh, engage in a way uh, from both sides to let people know what it is that we are interested in and to make those uh, uh, interests known and to participate and to have a footprint uh, in that process. We will continue to do that because it is a work in progress uh, and that the committee work on that will be undertaken uh, 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 beginning next week after instructions are out to the uh, to the committees, the authorizing committees. So do the instructions contain an amount of money that is requested for an issue? So, for example, are there as to how much money will be put in for vaccines or child care, who gets to decide that? Well, that will be a discussion within the the the, the, the committees. That uh, the instruction goes uh, to the authorizing committees, uh, uh, and uh, and not all of them, but it goes to a certain number of the authorizing uh, committees, uh, and the authorizers uh, have got to uh, are given instruction as to uh, what the amount that they can, uh, 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 th that they are dealing with. Uh, what then happens, um, uh, the, um, the, uh, what happens from there is with that, um, uh, they mark to that number. And those over so the conversations will be held in the authorizing committees as to what specific programs they will be dealing with. So that is that amount given by the leadership who gives them an amount, for example, let's say on the child care issue. How, how would it be set what the number will be for child care? Well, that will be that will happen within the, uh, the, uh, the authorizing committees. So, if we want to have input, are you, are we supposed to we need to be talking to the authorizing committees? Okay. Okay. Thank you, madam chair. Thank you. Okay. All of us need to be doing that. Okay. Now, uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to um, officially accept and recognize that the role that I want to play with this caucus is one of being an additional resource for you. The newer members, I'm going to individually talk and work through any uh information that you may want that is something that uh chairwoman delora has asked me to do to stay close with our newer members questions like we just had um that uh, lois frankel just brought up you know there's other questions that i can be a resource to uh connect to um our chair, which, as you know, during this process is going to be a lot coming at her. She's more than capable of doing it, but I am committed to assisting and being available to all of you. Just, I'm just so grateful for this opportunity and just excited about our new Cardinals that we have. Uh, Barbara Lee and um, Matt Cartwright, who is a dear soul to me, I'm just excited about their leadership. Thank you so much, and I yield back. 
Thank you very, very much. And again, I should congratulate uh, Congress, Congressman Cole on being vice chair um, on the Republican side of the aisle. Uh, I understand next is Congressman Dutch Ruppersberger. Mr. President, thank you for your leadership, Kay. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, just a comment I want to make, not a question. Uh, we, I think, are in some very difficult times in our country and in our Congress. And, you know, I've been here a long time, not as long as maybe some other, and I'm very concerned about uh, the relationships uh, between Republicans and Democrats and even Republicans on Republicans and Democrats on Democrats. And I think that our committee can set a standard on working together and to do what's right. And an example of that, you know, even though you disagree with someone doesn't mean that they're your enemy. Just understand that somebody has another point of view. And we can have many, many debates, as we know. But I really think that it's an honor to be on this committee. We have a lot of uh, power on this committee. We can set a great standard. But, you know, I think we have to do something to set an example uh, that we're going to do what's right for our country, even though we might have different points of view. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, important remarks, uh, Dutch. And I think uh, Congresswoman Granger said it well. We can disagree, but we do not have to be disagreeable. And that has been a hallmark, uh, I think, of the past history of the Appropriations Committee. Uh, is there any further discussion? If not, let us proceed to the business of the day. First, the committee rules. I just might add that there may be votes of... of uh, called on the previous question and the rule, but we will apprise people so uh, and want to see if we can conclude our business uh, before the uh, the various groups are called and it, it closes down. Um, the resolution before you shows the proposed changes to the committee's rules. Proposed additions are shown in italics and the proposed deletions are shown in brackets. Uh, the resolution was circulated to uh, your offices on Monday, February 1st. The proposed amendments to our rules reflect amendments made last month to the rules of the House. Uh, one, updating requirements regarding public access to committee records to reflect reliance on the internet over paper, which would just be sitting in filing cabinets. Two, extending the requirement that we publicly post amendments from our markups to cover amendments considered but not adopted. Three, expanding the disclosure rules for non-governmental witnesses before the committee and to require disclosure of, first, government payments, grants and contracts that reach back 36 months instead of two fiscal years. Secondly, grants from foreign governments instead of just contracts and payments, and third, fiduciary relationships to entities with an interest in the subject matter of a hearing. Fourth, um, uh, conforming changes to reflect the House's move toward electronic filing of committee reports, and fifth, codifying a requirement from the last Congress that committee reports identify hearings related to the bill that is being reported. These changes required by House rules are all aimed at increasing transparency and streamlining the functioning of the House. There's nothing in the proposal that changes the way the committee functions uh, in any substantive manner. Uh, and we have consulted with the minority on this document, and I believe that we are in agreement. And I would ask uh, Ranking Member Granger if you would like to uh, I'll say something with regard to the committee rules. Yes, I would. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Chairman, for putting forward these clarifying and technical changes to conform with the House rules. I have no objection to the adoption of the committee rules, and I yield back. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion of the proposed uh, committee rules? Hearing none, if there is no discussion, I would like to recognize the general lady from Ohio, Ms. Kaptur, for a motion to approve the committee rules. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that the committee adopt the rules package for the 117th Congress. 
Uh, everyone has heard the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. 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 <laughs> All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it, and the motion is agreed to. Okay. Uh, the next order of business uh, is to adopt our subcommittee jurisdictions. Uh, and the jurisdictional breakdown uh, before you is, is unchanged from the last Congress and was also circulated uh, to everyone's office on Monday, February 1st. And again, we have consulted with the minority on this document, and I believe we are in agreement. Um, is there any discussion of the uh, jurisdictions? Well, let me just ask uh, Ranking Member Granger if you would like to speak on the subcommittee jurisdictions. Yes, thank you. Since there are no changes to the subcommittee jurisdiction, I have no objection to propose subcommittee jurisdictions for the 117th Congress. I yield back. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to uh, speak on the subcommittee jurisdictions? And again, if you'd like to be recognized, please use the raise your hand function in WebEx and you will be recognized. Okay. Okay. Uh, no discussion. Uh, I will then recognize uh, Congresswoman Kaptur for a motion to approve the subcommittee jurisdictions. Madam Chair, I move that the committee adopt the subcommittee jurisdictions for the 117th Congress. Everyone has heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All, of, all of those opposed. Aye. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. Well, this is a good auspicious start for the uh, committee. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, I just want to note that the committee has coordinated subcommittee sizes and ratios, and both the majority and minority have completed subcommittee assignments. Uh, and finally, unless there is any further business, I would like to ask unanimous consent that the staff be given the authority to make the technical and conforming changes to the items that we have approved uh, today. So unanimous. Okay, without objection. Uh, so, so ordered. Um, let me just uh, say one more word. I want to just say uh, thank you uh, to all of you for being a part of uh, what I truly believe is uh, the absolute heart and soul and the center of what we do uh, in, in the House of Representatives. And that is the work of the, uh, of, of the Appropriations uh, a, a Committee. Uh, and uh, it is so stipulated about the power of the purse. And I believe that the committee, uh, without our functioning uh, and uh, uh, approving the appropriations bills uh, uh, every year, uh, we know that the government uh, will shut down. That is not something that we want to do. We want to work together um, and we want to, what I hope is to share an experience of shaping history uh, and I believe it that this is time uh, and the crises that we are in uh, demand that we do shape history and do it uh, in the best way that we know how of using the power of the federal government to help to try to make a difference in people's lives so that they can have the opportunity uh, uh, to have an opportunity and a better chance uh, for a better life. And that's what I think, again, is the hallmark of the Appropriations Committee. So if there is no further business, um, uh, which I will ask, is there anything else that anyone would like to address? Um, if not, the committee stands adjourned. Let me mention, I think the votes have started. The votes have started. So uh, follow your group. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>